Hi, I'm Rick Dior, and I was just about to do a session this morning for a well-known producer. Uh, I do a lot of things that are online. They send me tracks, and I'll put some drums on them. And this particular producer, who's also a great bass player, had asked me to recreate something that was similar to Keith Jarrett's uh, tune Questar from the record My Song. That's an ECM uh, record with uh, the great John Christensen playing drums, one of my favorite drummers. And so I set up some flat rides and an old uh, Istanbul jazz ride with some rivets. And this is a Peisty 17-inch uh, crash and my old 15-inch K hi-hats. And I was about to cut this track and I thought, you know, this would be a good time to maybe uh, record a video showing you all how I do this for kind of a different setting, which is a jazz drum setting. And normally when I do this, I'll mic everything. When I do my YouTube videos, uh, in most cases, I'll just use two overheads and a bass drum mic. That's it. It's a quick setup. Uh, but when I do my recording sessions, I want to make sure that when I send stuff off, the uh, folks who are mixing it have the most options. So I, I normally mic everything. So you'll see here I have a hi-hat mic, a snare drum mic, a tom mic here, a floor tom mic, a bass drum mic. I don't know if you can see that on the video, but we'll take some pictures later. And then a snare drum mic. So seven mics overall. Now most of the sound, like I said, is gonna come from the overheads. And I use these, these other mics to augment the sound, to fill it in when needed. Or if there's a particular thing that a, a, a mixer wants to bring out, an engineer wants to bring out, they can do that. Uh, the drums I'm using real quick are these Centennial Gretches, which are uh, great sounding drums. Uh, I wanted more a more earthy tone on this track very dry, almost like old American Indian drums. So what I did is I put these really thick, really thick earth tone heads on here. So they hardly ring at all, but it's a perfect sound for this particular kind of track because you don't want ringing toms, you want ringing cymbals. That's the genre. You don't hear a lot of ringing tom-toms on old ECM records. It's a very dry sound. And Manfred Eicher, of course, was the engineer for those sessions. Great drum sounds. You know, guys like John Christensen, Jack D. Jeanette, all kinds of great drummers played uh, with that label. So I'll play the drums real quick with the snares off. something buzzing over here. I'll have to take care of that before I record. So let's talk about my concept for miking these. Uh, the mics I use, uh, except for the bass drum mic, are all condenser mics, which means they run either with a separate tube power supply, but I'm not using any tube mics here. Actually, a spider just came down from the ceiling. That's good luck. We'll get this web here. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. Uh, but anyway, I use these condenser uh, mics and the ones I'm using here on the toms and the hi-hat and the snare drum are made by a company called Ships. I'll put this on the screen and these are CMC6 uh, bodies and then I have different capsules I can use, I can screw on there and these happen to be hypercardioid capsules. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on this other camera here. We'll see how long the batteries last. And I'm going to show you a close-up of these mics. And if this doesn't work, I'll just take some pictures. So let's see here. Okay, we're getting that ring light a little bit. You see the capsule there. We'll show you this one. And they're all the same. These are mics that I use for concert recording, classical recordings mainly, but they sound great on quieter kinds of drum recordings. And then here's the one on my floor top. All the same, like I said. And the one on my hi-hat, if I can get it in here, is angled down. And we'll talk about those more in a minute. Real fast, the overheads I'm using are these Neumann uh, 89s. Again, I'll post those on the screen so you can see a better picture because this isn't doing it justice. These are great all-round Microphones, I'll turn this off here. So these mics are really wonderful because um, they're kind of like Swiss Army knives. The other mic I use a lot are the Sennheiser MKH 800s. 
Same thing. They're Swiss Army knives because they have a lot of patterns and roll-offs and pads. So you can do a lot with them. They're really, really useful. And they're pretty much flat. So if you have a symbol that you like and you record with these mics, it's not going to add too much to it. A lot of mics are very colored. These are not. Again, made for the classical recording world. Strings, they sound great on cello, good on piano, things like that. But at a low volume with cymbals, I want these flat rides to really come out on the recording. Perfect microphone for that. So we'll get back now to these Sheps mics. The capsule I'm using is called a hypercardioid capsule. I'll put a picture of that pattern on the screen here. So a hypercardioid is more focused than a regular cardioid. Cardioid uh, pattern looks like a heart shape almost backwards. So it pretty much picks up what's in front of it, all right, rejects the rear, a little bit of sides, but mostly what's in front. So it's a unidirectional microphone. And most um, uh, condenser mics will have that pattern available. Uh, or you can get a screw-on capsule. Uh, lots of dynamic mics, most all of them, are some sort of cardioid or hypercardioid microphone. The benefit for using a hypercardioid, which is much more focused, has a little node on the back, but rejects the sides pretty viciously, uh, is that you can get it in real close and not pick up a lot of symbols or extra stuff. So if you're an engineer and you want to bring up those sounds in the mix, you're not also bringing up the symbols and everything around it. So think of it like a microscope for recording engineers. Uh, if you watch you know, NFL games, you see those parabolic bowls they use with the mics and they can focus in and hear the quarterback or whoever uh, you know, yelling the signals or the play. That's, what you, that's a super hypercardioid shotgun microphone that's really long and it's focused in. It's, like I said, it's like a microscope. You could aim it as a spotlight and hear what they're saying. It's pretty amazing. So those are the mics I'd like to choose for this. And also it's wonderful for stereo separation where you're trying to pan things. Uh, when I do surround sound mixes, I'll, I'll pan drums all over the place and cymbals uh, certain times. And it's really amazing what you can do with these hypercardioid mics. Now they do make dynamic mics, obviously, that are hypercardioid. Uh, some of the Sennheiser microphones uh, do that, uh, as well as... Um, some of the Shure microphones uh, are hypercardioid, especially the bass drum microphones. Uh, the uh, 52, which is what I'm using here, uh, tends towards hypercardioid, so it rejects a lot, but it's a larger capsule. I did a, maybe three or four recording videos. I'll post a link to that in the description, and I have a, a, you know, one that's pretty long, all about microphones, where I show you uh, how the patterns work and different things. So you might want to watch that. We're not going to go into that here. So the main goal when I record these tracks is obviously, number one, to get a good take. And I'll usually, you know, do two or three takes uh, of different, uh, you know, some are more aggressive, some are less aggressive. Uh, and then the engineer or producer can edit those together or just take one that they really like or take parts of one. They have a lot of options. So normally I do at least two, sometimes three and they might find one they like the whole way. I'll try to get all of them pretty perfect so there's not any editing, but if they want to do editing, they can. It's tough to edit when you're using cymbals with rivets. I've got three cymbals with rivets here. Uh, this is the Peisty Flat Ride, 18 inch, Peisty Flat Ride, 20 inch. Like I said, the Istanbul, they all have rivets. So again, with that ECM stuff, you want lots of cymbals, very airy, beautiful sound, floaty kind of sound. This track is, is, is like that. So uh, hopefully when the track comes out, it's with, it's with a singer, I'll get permission from the producer to uh, post it or, or at least direct you towards it so you can hear it. Uh, these hi-hats, these 15s, are my favorite hi-hats for this kind of stuff because they're super gentle.
so when I splash like that, it, um, you know, there, it's a sweet sound. It's not a harsh sound. It doesn't interrupt anything. It blends right in with the rest of the, of the cymbals and also the closed sound. That particular sound is, is really nice. It's almost like a little kabasa there. All right, so uh, that's pretty much how I do it here. Now let's talk about configuration. So you see how these two mics here are triangulated kind of with the bass drum mic. So I think of it as a big triangle, not equal necessarily. The main thing, the main problem with, uh, with using a lot of mics like this is phase issues. So if you watch my other recording videos where I talk about this a lot, uh, phase cancellation happens when you have different time arrival of sounds to, to the same mics and you have the, all those mics active and then they cancel each other out. So you lose a lot of the low end and the sound tends to sound like and you know that's a phaser sound which is a guitar effect or any kind of effect you can use on anything but it's not desirable necessarily for an acoustic recording. So when you use all these mics you have to check phase. So you can do, you do that with a phase meter or you can just do it by listening. Don't do it with headphones because headphones you know you're only listening to one ear at a time you'll never hear phase that way. You gotta listen on a good set of studio speakers or speakers and then you can flip the phase or move the phase. The best way to do it if you're really picky like I am is to record everything and then bring it up on your waveform editor and then you could see the time arrival of different things. So I would hit something like this and then have all the mics on and I could see how much of a delay. Now when mics are this close you're only talking about two, three milliseconds at the most. A concert hall you might be talking about 15 milliseconds. But again if you're hearing like something with not a lot of bass drum or very thin sounding or a weird phasey sound, it's because your mics one or two, usually the overheads with the snare mic or the bass drum mic are out of phase. Now sometimes I'll use an XY set up over my uh, drums like this for more rock things, but I want a big stereo spread for, uh, for this kind of thing. So if the producer or engineer wants to pan things hard left or right, they can get that sound and you'll hear that once again here. So you can use that to great effect to have cymbals coming from, especially like I said, if you use surround sound, but from hard left or hard right. So that's the benefit to spreading these. You could do it in an XY, it's just you end up picking up a little more of the left or the right. It's not truly separated. But like I said, these two top ones are not in hypercardioid. They are in just regular old cardioid. All right, so I hope uh, this helps you a little with your decisions. Again, these are expensive mics, but you can get good results with you know, 57s uh, or 58s, the Shure vocal mic, you know. It's a cardioid mic. Now, the only problem with that is it's going to be noisy because to get the gain out of that, a dynamic mic, you've got to bring your preamps up. And I'm, I use quiet preamps anyway. I use Grace preamps and Millennium Media preamps and Great River preamps, which are pretty quiet, very quiet, actually. Uh, and on these kinds of acoustic, you know, projects I do, you don't want any noise. The biggest problem between a cheap mic, or the biggest difference between a cheap mic and an expensive uh, mic is usually the signal to noise ratio, where you're going to have to crank up a, a, a cheaper mic and it's going to have a lot of noise, a lot of hiss. For a rock recording, not a problem. But for an acoustic recording where there's sometimes silence and all that and light cymbals, it's going to be an issue. So that's why you, you use expensive, quiet mics. So I'll just play a little for you and, uh, and I'll get on to my tracking for the day. <laughs> 